should be talking about one of the very important topics in climatology that is energy budget now if i try to explain uh, i can say i have a box and this box has six pieces of foam as you know foam can expand and take the shape of the remaining space so consider these six pieces of foam to be very compressed and fixed tightly now what would happen if i remove three pieces of foam and then i add three pieces of foam back that would remain in the same state and this is what we call as steady state equilibrium and same is the case with earth so the amount of sun rays that comes into our earth is balanced by the amount of rays or the amount of radiations that goes out and therefore we can say earth can maintain a homogeneous or uniform equilibrium now consider another case in which i remove 3 but i add only two pieces what would happen there would be an empty space for one piece and that is how consider this to be earth now what would happen if the outgoing radiations are more than the incoming radiations the earth might get cooler in the reverse case if the incoming radiations are more than outgoing radiations what would happen is earth would get warmer so it's important to understand that earth tries to maintain a uniform equilibrium and there are rarely cases where you can see the earth is either getting cooled or it is getting warm so this is how we understand the energy budget now if i say you have the sun here and you have the sunlight that is coming in now there are atoms on the surface what would happen when the sunlight falls onto them the atoms will get excited when they are excited they will try to move more quickly so since they will have more energy there would be more movement so movement would increase this increase in the movement would lead to increase in the temperature now let me explain another case consider you have a bucket of water and you have a tap that is pouring into the bucket what would happen if the tap is on and the water is pouring continuously at certain point of time this water would kind of overflow from the bucket but what would happen if you have a drain pipe so you have a tap that is pouring water and a drain pipe which is removing water from the other end if this is a case there would be equilibrium that is maintained so you have the water that is coming in and the water that is going out and both of them are balanced similarly if these particles get excited and temperature increases the things would move at a very faster pace if the things move at a very faster pace there would be rise in the temperature if that is true what would happen is earth would get heated to an extremity but that is not really the case the earth is not getting heated beyond certain point so what is happening is the amount that is radiated back in the form of radiative cooling so you have radiative cooling and this radiative cooling cools back the earth surface so you have the incoming radiations and the outgoing radiations that are balanced in one form or the other now i can say that the amount of heat that is radiated so amount of heat radiated is directly proportional to fourth power of the amount of temperature so if there is certain rise in the temperature the amount of heat that is radiated would increase proportionally to it 
So that is another important thing that we try to understand. Now one of the very interesting facts that you must be well aware of before we start about the, uh, the flow of radiation and the process in which we will understand it is uh, let's talk about this as the earth surface and on the top you have the earth's atmosphere. Now what would happen here is the amount of solar radiation or the insulation that is coming in would either be absorbed by the atmosphere or be absorbed by the surface. So the amount that is absorbed by the atmosphere is merely 23%. In contrast to it, the amount that is absorbed by the earth surface is 48%. Now that is the amount that is absorbed. When I talk about the amount that is radiated back from the earth surface, it radiates I would use some other color to explain it properly. So you have the amount that is radiated back is 12% merely from the earth's surface while the amount that is radiated back from the atmosphere is much higher at 59%. That means most of the solar heating is occurring at the surface because the absorbed amount is 48% and the radiated amount is merely 12%. That means most of the heating occurs at the surface. In contrast to it, most of the, uh, I could say, radiation that goes back or radiative cooling occurs in the atmosphere. So atmosphere is mainly responsible for radiative cooling while earth surface is mainly responsible for heating. Now when we try to understand the total amount of incoming solar radiations, I can say the total amount of incoming solar radiation can be divided into uh, source, various sources. So the first and the most important source is solar radiation. We consider that around 174 petawatts is the total insulation that earth surface receives. Of this 99.7% or I could say 173 petawatts is what is determined by solar radiation. The next comes the geothermal energy or the energy from within the earth or the interior of the earth. This accounts for merely 0.25% of the total energy and if I talk in terms of amount, it is around 44 petawatts, sorry, 44 terawatts. So there is just one petawatt left. The total is 174 petawatt of which 173 is the insulation and then 44 terawatt is the uh, the source is geothermal energy. The next important source is tidal energy. Tidal energy accounts for 0.002% of the total insulation that is coming in. And this is around, uh, if I talk in terms of watts per square meter, that comes to be 0 0.059 watt per meter square of the energy that is coming on. To the surface then the next important is the waste energy or the energy from the waste heat which accounts for 0.007 percent and these four are the uh, of these solar is the main primary there are remaining three and besides these there are other sources that is in the form of interplanetary dust you have the solar wind that is occurring through you have the space and the thermal radiation that is taking place so this was the distribution of the insulation that is occurring on the earth surface or the incoming solar radiation. Now when we talk about the amount or the energy exchange that is taking place, I can classify that into three sections. The first is by reflection, absorption. So first is reflection, you have absorption, the next is radiation and re-emission is the last. So re-emission is kind of a very minor topic that we will be referring to. 
Now, what is albedo? Albedo is the amount of uh, radiation that is coming onto the earth's surface. So, if I say albedo is 0.3, that means 30% of the uh, energy that is coming onto earth is reflected and 70% is absorbed. Now, if I say albedo is 0.3, that means 30% is reflected and 70% is absorbed. Now, let us talk about the energy that is reflected. Of this 30% that is reflected, it is reflected from different sources. I can say 6% is reflected from the uh, atmosphere, 20% is reflected from the clouds and 4% is reflected from the ground. So that is how we account for the 30% reflection. The amount that is coming in is reflected and that is reflected by 6% by the atmosphere, 20% by the clouds and 4% from the earth's surface. So this is what is reflection. Now, now the next is absorption. Absorption is very important because when I say uh, the amount that is absorbed, I can classify it into two. That is the amount absorbed by land and water and the amount absorbed by space. So you have 19% that is absorbed by space and 51% of the total energy is absorbed by either land or oceans. Now of this 51% that is absorbed, you have various uh, divisions I could say that we can classify again. 24% or 23% is transported back to atmosphere as latent heat. So 23% is transported back as latent heat. That's here. So you have 23% that is transported back as latent heat. Then you have 7% that is by conduction and rising air that is released into the surface. Then you have 6% of the energy that is radiated directly from the earth's surface. So you have 6% that is radiated directly from the earth's surface, 7% that is radiated by means of conduction, 23% as latent heat from atmosphere and finally you have 15% that is transported from atmosphere by the, uh, by the process of radiation. Now the 19% that is absorbed by the space is further divided into two, that is 16% which is re-radiated into the space and the remaining 3% which is transported to the clouds where you have, uh, which I could say is absorbed by the clouds and then further utilized. Now next is radiation or re-radiation. Of this 74% uh, that is absorbed, it is re-radiated into the atmosphere and how it is re-radiated is, it is by 64% is by means of clouds and 6% is from the ground and finally you have re-emission that takes place where you have the infrared rays which are coming from the greenhouse gases that are used and that increase the temperature on the earth's surface and you have the process of re-emission that occurs. Now this is what is about the total radiation. Now as we said surface plays a major role. We will understand what is surface radiation. Now what happens when the sun rays fall onto the earth? You have the short wavelengths that fall onto the earth and those which are radiated back are in form of the long wave radiations. So if I say during the daytime when sun is there, what would happen? There is plenty of short waves that are coming in. Since there is plenty of short waves that are coming in, short waves would be greater than long waves. Long, uh, long radiation waves that are going on. So, during the daytime what happens is there is process of convection by which heating occurs. However, during the night what happens is since there is no sunlight, there is no short wave radiations that are occurring. So, short wave radiations come to zero. However, the earth has absorbed some heat and that heat is moving up or that is cooling and that is by means of radiative cooling. So in very simple form I can say what happens during the daytime is you have the short, uh, short wavelength rays 
that are coming in and long wavelength rays that are going in and that energy trap leads to heating of the earth and that process occurs by means of convective currents or convection however during the night since there is no sunlight there is no incoming short wave radiations but there is cooling from the surface that takes place and that is a form of radiative cooling however there is slight difference between a dry ground and the wet ground or an open ground dry ground means if there is no vegetation if there is no veg vegetation what would happen the heating can be in the in the form of only conduction so conduction can be the best process to heat here however if you have plants in an open area or you have a wet open area what would happen there would be process of evapotranspiration taking place however it's important to note that this evapotranspiration accounts for a very small percentage of the total variations that we would be understanding so despite of that it is a important process because it is the process that occurs after photosynthesis so photosynthesis is a process by which plants make food and in presence of sunlight so sunlight is an important element for uh, the process of photosynthesis to takes place uh, to take place and this photosynthesis finally uh, occurs from the plants and plants release energy in the form of evapotranspiration again uh, we talked about the surface radiation however an, another important criteria is the ocean surface now the ocean surface you have heating that occurs in a very different phenomena that we have already covered in the separate class so we we have already talked about the thermohaline circulations that you can refer in the different class where we have discussed about how heating occurs in the ocean surface just for the reference back the strongest thermohaline circulations are found in atlantic ocean however shallower thermohaline circulations can be seen in the pacific ocean so this was all about uh, energy budget we will be covering more topics related to climatology in our further classes you can subscribe to our channel for any further updates have a good day ahead